Hey guys, Ash here coming at you today in Raid Shadow Legends. Welcome to the video, guys. I am happy to have you all here. Sending you positive vibes today. I'm doing good. I just got home. I think I mentioned that in the last video or the video before that as well. I travel. I've been traveling back to back to back to back to back weekends uh, lately here. I don't really love traveling, but this last trip was really, really fun. Shout out to my best friend, Dan. I know you're watching this video. Big Raid player, Dan. He, uh, he got me a surprise birthday trip down to Miami, Florida, and then to Orlando, Florida to catch the Celtics versus the Heat and the Magic. I'm a big NBA fan, big Celtics fan. Uh, and uh, yeah, it was a blast. It was a blast, guys. Uh, did a little bit of nightlife there in Miami for the first time in my life. I might be a little bit too old for that, but uh, we had we, we pretended that we were young, you know? It's, it, it, what matters is what's in your heart, right? At least that's what us old people tell ourselves. Anyway, guys, uh, today, uh, I think like two of you guys asked. So, uh, you know, I'm taking a gamble with this video. Hopefully I get more than two viewers. But two of you guys asked on the last ranking every legendary champion that I've or grading every legendary champion that I've ever upgraded on my account that video was like two hours long hopefully this will be a lot shorter we're gonna cover all the rares but first I want to open up an eternal soul stone for you guys Ooh, exciting now this is the only the second one that I've ever opened on my account so here we go guys drum roll please it is boom and it's whoa I mean, I'm not the biggest Saito fan, but I got the perfect soul. Whoa! That is officially my first six-star champion, guys. All right, thanks for watching the video. That's gonna do it. No, that's pretty cool, though. You know what? While we're here, while we're here, you guys gonna get an impromptu soul stone opening. Everybody in the comments right now is like, this is not what I clicked on. This is not, okay. Fortress, okay, okay, okay. And then we get uh, Dur and Spider and Kytus. Okay, not very interesting there, but we will collect those and move along with the topic of the video. No, I don't want, I'm still, by the way, holding true, guys. I still not purchased any of these uh, thingamajiggers, these Immortal Soul Stones. Good job. I personally think they're overpriced. Maybe that's just me, but you guys can let me know if you agree or disagree. All right, so what am I doing? Where am I going? I have no idea. Uh, but we are going to go ahead and talk about all the rares. So let's just start from the top, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to give them a letter grade, uh, every single champion based on, you know, what I think of them. But of course, as we always say here on the channel, as I scroll and scroll, uh, you know, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. It depends on you, what you need on your account, where to use these champions, what other champions you have, what teams you have, blah, 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 right? Coltar, A+. Plus. A++, plus plus, if I can be so bold. Uh, really, I think that, that Heartseeker is uh, one of the better abilities inside the game. Forget just rare champions, just anything, right? 100% turn meter, a ton of damage, 30% extra chance for a crit as well. I have two Cold Hearts built on my account. One is in Destroy Gear. I don't really use her anymore, but I used to use her against a Scarab King. Now I just use Earl's so Soul Cage. But either way, we'll talk about the other one when we get to her here, but she's just insane i think far and away the best rare champion in the game that's my opinion a four time hitter on the a1 and then the aoe on the a2 as well i put her in a phantom touch of blessing as well uh next up we have apothecary uh kind of just built him fast i don't use him as much anymore but he's definitely an a plus rare as well i would definitely rank him top five in the game i mean he's a simple champion but he's a beast i haven't even chose his blessing yet uh he's got increased speed he's got turn meter filled and he's got the soothing chant this is a critical heal on a two turn freaking cooldown that's really really good and then he has a triple hitter which is really valuable as well especially like fire knight on his a1 ability love apothecary uh soulbound bowyer a box with a question mark inside another box with a question mark and yet another box with a question mark then a box with a question mark what does that mean it means you don't have emojis on your phone. Man, I gotta choose my rare blessings. Ash, come on, dude. You're slacking here, bro. Soul Bond, I'm actually gonna shock the world here and say that she is an A plus 
That's right. I'm a big, big fan of Soulbound Boyer. I think she's incredibly underrated for rare champions. In my mind, she deserves to be talked about in the same sentence as an apothecary in Bellower. Like, she's that good, right? Anyway, she's in a stun set. She's amazing for control because she has that AoE with an additional chance of a crit on her A1 ability. So she can just slam AoEs, and that's how I pr primarily use her in a stun set. For that reason, too, I have Fearsome Presence as my Tier 6 Mastery to get that extra 5% chance. Keep in mind, those stuns are not predicated on accuracy, so it's not, you know, incredibly important if you're using her for control. However, I will say that on her A3, she has a 50% chance when booked, uh, or excuse me, 100% chance when booked of fully depleting the target's turn meter. Again, really, really good ability. We're ignoring defense as well. 75% on the A2 ability. Uh, just an overall incredible rare champion. One of the best kind of expansion rares added to the game, right up there with like Frozen Banshee in my opinion. Next up is going to be Ash Walker, my main man Ash Walker. How did you get in here? I have connections. I use Ash Walker in a similar fashion. You know what? I, I a firm believer that end game rares, ga ga uh, be, 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 rares that players use in the end game, that would be end game rares, Ash. Those champions, I I'm using them way more for control, especially specifically uh, the secret rooms and Doom tower. I think there's like three or four rare only secret rooms. So I'm using a lot of stun sets. You'll see that in the video. Ash Walker is no exception to the rule. He's a great control champion and also a good damage dealer. And you'll see that I'm willing to sacrifice some crit rate and some crit damage on these champions in stun sets. And you'll see I'll, I'll have that fearsome presence mastery on almost every single one of these champions. It has a, well, where's the, where's the mastery over here? Easier this way. Again, 5% extra shot even from artifacts to land that stun, bringing up to a 23%. He also has a stun on his A2 ability and decreased turn meter of all enemies by 10% if the attack is critical. And then he has a strong AoE with a weak version of Weaken on a three-turn cooldown. A great damage dealer and a great control champion in a stun set. I'm gonna give him an A-. minus. Maybe I'm a little biased. I don't know. Next up, we're going to have Scrapper, guys. Scrapper's really a specialist for the Scarab King. Uh, he has a shield that he's putting on himself and decreased max HP. Uh, Two-turn cooldown on the A2. Another shield uh, on his A1. Honestly, I'd rather Armager uh, in a Destroy set than Scrapper. I think Scrapper is... Not that great. I'm just going to be real with you guys. I'm going to give him a D, a D champion. All right, Dagger. Dagger is a decreased defense on a three-turn cooldown, but it's only a 75%. So the bad news is is it's only 75% chance of landing that decreased defense. The good news is she's probably up there in terms of a three-turn cooldown behind War Maiden as, you know, a fairly reliable debuffer. Uh, so I'm a big fan of Dagger, and keep in mind she's Void Affinity, so you don't have to worry about those weak hits and not placing the debuffs against uh, weak affinity matchups. So really, I think that she's a pretty serviceable, pretty good champion. However, I will say that I do think that you can, you know... I, I, give me a war mate. I want that 100%. I'm greedy. I'm greedy, guys. So I don't really use her anymore. You'll see she's kind of half naked here. Uh, I'm going to give her a B because I think she's still, you know, a solid, uh, one of the more memorable rare void champions out there. Just not my fave. Kazar Depart, A+. Plus. I promise I'm not going to rank everybody in A plus here. I feel like I've been throwing out some really good grades, but truthfully, because our Depart is so freaking good, I personally rank him top three rare champion. I know that's crazy talk, but for me personally, it would be just my top three. I impromptu, not that anybody asked. It would be Cold Heart, uh, number one. Bellower number two, Kazar Depart number three. Then I'd probably put Apothecary and, I don't know, Reliquary or something. Uh, that would be my own personal uh, top five rares. But I think this dude is so incredible. Again, a stun set because he has two AoEs on a three-turn cooldown. I love this champion. He's a big version of increased accuracy on all allies and the weak version of decreased defense. All on a three-turn cooldown. Incredibly great debuffer, damage dealer. He's filling his turn meter here on his A2 uh, attack. So he just keeps going. Man, I really love this dude. Again, I have him built with Fearsome Presence, you guessed it, in a stun set. He just really helps CC there, but he's also debuffing and putting increased accuracy. Really, really love this champion. Uh, so A+. Gear Grinder. 
Man, I, I've mentioned this before, but this guy's really grown on me as a support reviver rare champion. He's kind of a newish void uh, rare, I say like within the last year-ish or so. There are really so many rares that, you know, it's like basically one a year, I feel like. The new faction has one rare in it, man. <laughs> I don't care about rares anymore, do you, Plarium? You don't care about them? What do you think? I like turtles. Gear Grinder, I have him with a lot of HP and a shield set. He's going to help out as kind of my, my big tank reviver on uh, as a support on my Doom Tower teams. He's got continuous heal on the A1. He's got a heal on a three-turn cooldown AoE on the A2. Not a great heal, to be honest with you, but it's a, it's a heal, you know? Uh, but with the shield set... And with the revival on the A3, and then a little bit of healage, he actually can have a pretty useful, you know, role as a tank on a team and a support champ. Uh, so I'm going to give him a B plus. I actually like the dude. All right, Draconis. Draconis is a decent shield option for you guys. He's a shield on the A2. He also has an attack an enemy, removes debuffs from the ally with the lowest HP, then heals them by 25% of the damage inflicted on the Order of Mercy. So kind of an interesting heal there where it's predicated on him dealing a lot of damage as an HP-based champion. He's not necessarily dealing a ton of damage, but you do want to have him with 100% crit rate because it's the same thing on his A1 ability. I'm going to give him a B-. minus. Uh, you know, I, I feel like he's been power crept even for rare champions over the last two years since he was introduced to the game. Not the worst, but certainly not the best, I would say, uh, rare champion out there. We have Dilgal. Dilgal is kind of like my least favorite dwarf uh, <laughs> compared to Khazar Depart, but he's still a beast as well, right? He has a decreased speed on the A1. You know me, I love decreased speed, even the weak version. Uh, he has an AoE times two with decreased accuracy. It's a really great debuff to have, especially on a three turn cooldown from a rare for a rare champion. It is only a 75% chance of landing, actually make it an 85% chance of landing if my math is correct here. 85%, uh, but it's attacking two times. So you're basically gonna be landing that. So it's a really good ability here. And he has a three times hitter with a big version decreased defense on a, is 65% land rate, 70% with sniper, and that's each hit. So again, for bosses, he's bringing the uh, a decreased speed, he's bringing the big version of decreased defense, and he's bringing the big version of decreased accuracy. I'm going to give him an A-. minus. I'm actually a big fan of Dilgal. I didn't mean to take a shot at him uh, at the beginning there. Armentine Skeleton. I've got to be one of the only 10 people in the world to have this dude maxed. He's an underwhelming uh, void rare. I wish they would buff some of these void rare champions, because, I don't know, it ought to be a special, kinda, right? To, to pull a Void Rare, I don't know. We have a block buffs on the A1, on the A2 block active skills, whatever, and on the A3 attack one enemy and places an increased defense on himself. Dude, trash F, especially for a Void. Uh, sorry, Armentine Skeleton. He's not the worst champion, not, not the worst Void Rare in the game. Here we go! But he's not that good. I actually maxed him because I had one of those videos where uh, any champion I pull, I'll max them to try them out. That's why he got maxed on my account. Otherwise, he would not be there. Reliquary Tender has a decreased attack on her A1. She's got the cleanse and the continuous heal on the A2. And then she has the revival on the A3, man. I'd put her, what, five? I highly rank Reliquary Tender. To have that cleanse and the heal on a three-turn cooldown from a reviver, I mean, she's bringing more than almost any other. I would say, I would say more support, better support than any other rare champion in the game. Uh, you know, up there with, I guess, Apothecary, but they're different types of champions, right? And Apothecary has that dungeon aura. I didn't even mention that too. Very helpful, 21%, especially when you're starting this game. So Reliquary, I'm a big fan of her. Uh, this build is kind of crap. I would like her in, I do like her in Relentless. I love her in Relentless. More continuous heals, more cleanses, right? From those extra turns. However, I want her a lot faster too if I used her more often. I'm gonna give her an A+. Here we are! Do we even need to talk about this ugly trash champion? No, we don't. The worst void rare, the worst rare, screw that, the worst champion in the game. Harrier, get out of my life, get out of the game, you even look bad, man, get out of here. I did not ask for the life that I was given, but it was given. All right, F, seducer. 
Now, Seducer's a champ, man. His Seducer is much better, right? He's a defense-based champion, easy to keep alive. He's got the AoE decrease attack uh, on a, uh, uh, granted, the weak version, but on a three-turn cooldown, not bad to have, certainly. And then the increased defense and the block uh, debuffs on all allies on a four-turn cooldown. Granted, it's the weak version of decreased defense, but this is a very, very good and underrated support champion out there in the game. I'm going to give him an A-. Painkeeper, really known for the decrease the cooldown of all ally skills by one turn combat tactics it might not sound like much especially to you newer players but this ability is money it's what makes a lot of these unkillable teams in the game whether you're talking about block damage with the iron twins fortress whether we're talking about clan boss teams she keeps the battle going and she's a pretty good healer with this a2 ability in the early game as well turn meter fill on the a1 i'm gonna give her an a minus next up we have bellower i already put him as a top three rare champion in the game he's got aoe's on every single ability he can be a campaign farmer he can be a stun a control champion he can be a debuffer he can deal be a damage dealer he can do it all block active skills on an aoe on his a1 great cc ability we get decreased speed more great cc ability on a three turn cooldown and then we have the aoe decrease attack and decrease defense weak versions but great and essential debuffs in the game so bellower man i have him in a stun set here uh just a tremendous champion a plus Fellhound, A+, the best campaign farmer inside the entire game, in my opinion. Also great and notable that he has a reflect damage on a two-turn cooldown that lasts for two turns. Really useful for Fire Knight if you're struggling getting that shield down. Uh, so Fellhound, I mean, just an incredible champion. That AoE on the A1 is enough to kill the waves in 12-3. Thus, uh, what, five-second or so campaign farmer. Great champion. Uh, Doom Screech, I'm going to give Doom Screech a, an A-. minus. He's got turn meter filled by 30% in the big version of decreased def increased defense. Decreased defense would suck on all allies. Increased defense, though, that makes him incredibly notable. Him and Marked, uh, I want to say, are still the only two rare champions with the big version of the de increased defense on an AoE attack. Plus, that 30% turn meter fill is incredibly good. I said A- minus because, really, this is an underwhelming A3. The rest of his kit is kind of underwhelming. Uh, well, I guess, you know what? Decreased accuracy for bosses, not too bad on the A1, but really, this ability vaults him from otherwise whatever you know like a c minus a d it's kind of unfair to take away one of their abilities and say they're a d but he's this ability is so good warning screech so uh, hp base champion a lot of hp too he's got 20k base hp here i don't use him so i have him kind of half naked here but a minus i would say on him renegade uh, another one of those champions she doesn't even need to be maxed another decrease the cooldown of all ally skills by two turns uh it's just like we talked about right there's only only two of these rare champions out there in the game who have decreased ally skill with cooldowns. So incredibly important to so many different teams. The functionality of this and the rarity of champions having this, especially rare champions. Uh, come to think of it, like how many epics even have a decreased cooldown of all ally skills? None? Am I forgetting somebody obvious? <laughs> Obviously, like Kaimar and Yumeko and Countess Lix and stuff uh, as we get into Legendary. But man, uh, I'm going to give her an A. Uh, just for that that utility. I mean, it's it's uh, it's hard not to give her that A grade. Uh, Cold Cart, we were talked about A+. We're made in it. You know what? I'm going to give her an A because she is, again, the quintessential debuffer, and she's campaign farmable. She's got the decreased defense, and she deals a decent amount of damage as well. And hey, I mean, she does it all with no clothes on. I have done nothing wrong ever in my life. I know this. And I love you. Okay, so A there. Sentinel. Sentinel's a pretty cool champion because he's got this massive, massive 85% chance of placing a provoke on his A1 hook ability. That's a really, really good provoke, uh, especially for Magma Dragon on that A1. So while he's a little niche, it is worth pointing out that hook ability. The rest of his kit's kind of like, okay, whatever. He's got the AoE. He's got decrease attack. Not bad. He's healing himself on the passive. The heal can be critical as well. So I guess he stands with Apothecary on those critical heal rare champions, right? Uh, overall, though, you know, very niche. But for Magma, 
great champion to have. Uh, he's an HP-based champion, so he's pretty, you know, decent to keep alive compared to other rare champions out there. I'm going to give him a B. Uh, Eris. So Eris is known as a kind of a clan boss beast, right? She's uh, removing a ram debuff from all allies and 100% chance when booked of placing increased speed, big version of all allies on for two turns on a three-turn cooldown. That's going to cleanse the stun, going to cleanse any debuffs from clan boss, and it's going to give you that increased speed. Not only that, but she's counterattacking the attacker when an ally is attacked. That's why I have her in a toxic set. She's uh, counterattacking and putting those poisons if you have the open debuff spots on the clan boss. I'm going to give her an A. Avir the Alchemage. Avir's not too bad. Uh, we're going to give him a B+. Plus. He's got an AoE decreased attack weak version. Decreased speed if they're under poison. I hate the conditionality there, but it's not a bad ability, especially for a rare champion on a three-turn cooldown. We also have turn meter fill and a heal. A really decent support champion, honestly, guys. Uh, I do think he's bringing the poison he is on his A1. Uh, so, you know, you can do a lot worse than if you're the Alchmage. Uh, I'm going to give him, did I already give him a grade? A B plus. I'm going to give him a B plus. Purgator! Oh, Purgator. Oh, Purgator. I know like 80% of you right now watching are like, who the heck is Purgator? Another one of those champions I maxed out for one of those videos, you know? Uh, he's good to AoE. Increase extra crit damage for each debuff on this champion. Eh, great purge, I guess. Uh, and then attacks one enemy, decreases target's max HP. Kind of an underwhelming and blase kit, especially considering the great purge. It's not doing a ton of damage or anything like that. Give me a champion like Ashwalker all day, every day over Purgator. I'm gonna give him a C minus. Not the worst, certainly not the best. Grave Chill Killer is great when you put her with Frozen Banshee, but by herself, meh. So I'm gonna grade, you know, by herself. I'm not gonna talk about combos. Uh, I'm gonna give her a. Ah, she got the AoE, weak version, decrease defense. If they're under poison, it's the big version. If they're under poison, I mean, there you go. A very decent, dependable debuffer there. Uh, and then she has poison, poison sensitivity, big version. Uh, if not, then the weak version. Uh, again, with Frozen Banshee, she's great. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and give her a... I'm going to give her a, uh, a B-. minus. Am I being too kind there? Frozen Banshee, uh, listen, the first champion ever added to the game with poison sensitivity, that is her claim to fame. Uh, overall, really useful uh, champion, right? She's just really, really solid. She's got turn meter fill of allies uh, for each debuff on the target on the A2 ability. She's bringing that poison. Again, each hit on two hits, placing a big version of poison if they're under poison sensitivity, which she's already bringing in her kit as well. So a great clan boss and dragon damage dealer, guys. Uh, I put her in retaliation gear, not right now, but I have a guide, semi-recent, uh, with her in that, uh, gear set. I really like her, I'm gonna give her an A. Uh... Hospitaler, she's a uh, companion champion of Harrier. Yeah, yeah, there. She's just about as good as her boyfriend, guys. She got the AOE. She got a seventy-five percent chance of removing a buff. She got the weak version of increased speed. Listen, man. It's not the worst kit of any rare, but it's certainly not the best. Far from it. We're going to give her a C-. Uh, Diabolist. She's a campaign farmable champion. Notable that she has 110 base speed. I have her here in a stun set. A great control champion. She's also bringing increased speed and on a three-turn cooldown. Big version with an AoE attack. Not a bad ability, certainly there. And then she has that turn meter fill and decreased turn meter of all enemies. Kind of a very mini energized from Lysandra ability. Uh, I have to say... Really solid base stats all around, except for the defense, right? But very speedy, great control. Uh, I'm going to give her an A-. minus. She's one of my favorite champions out there, guys. And again, campaign farmable, the final stage, I think, right? Or the one before that. We have Kale. I mean, all the starters to me, I'm just going to be quick here because you guys, we, we talked about all these stars so much, right? Kale is an A+. Akel's an A+. Elhane is an A. Galek to me is a B+. Those are my opinions. Do what you want with them. Greybeard. Here we go. We got Greybeard, another campaign farmable rare champion who's actually one of the better ones out there. His aura is 30% defense in dungeons. That's insanely good. And then he has the freeze on an AoE. Three turn cooldown. Not bad. 40% chance. He's a defense-based champion. He's easy to keep alive, and then he has a shield and counterattack on himself, leading him to place more provokes. Another high 75% chance of placing a provoke on the A1 ability. Very, very good champion. I'm going to give him an A-. Executioner. 
Whew, A minus, really like this guy. An AOE actually hits pretty hard. It's based on attack and defense, kind of awkward there. Otherwise, based on attack on his A1. Uh, he's got the AOE, decrease turn meter, and the decrease speed. Weak version, but on three turn cooldown, this is a very, very nice ability here. Decrease turn meter 20% and decrease speed. Very good ability. Increased defense, counterattack, leading into more stuns with the A1. Great for damage. And he has defense in all battles on the aura. Uh, Executioner A. A. I really like Executioner Banshee. She has an AoE decreased defense on her A1 ability. Again, in a stun set, fantastic option. I would say Banshee, the champion right below her, we're going to talk about in just a moment here. And uh, who else am I forgetting? Banshee, Abyssal, we're going to talk about in a second. And uh, I just talked about Bellor, right? I'm trying to think of my favorite like stun AoE, Soban Boyer. Uh, for rare champions. I really look out for the AoEs on the A1. If I see any champion in this game with an AoE on the A1, I immediately, my my ears perk up, right? And I'm like, oh, wait a second. Can I use this champion? I love the AoEs on the A1. I love them. She also has an AoE on the A2. So this makes her really, with a two-turn cooldown, really, arguably, right up there with Soul Bomb Boyer as the best stun and bring a little, little bit of debuffs as well. The bad news on Banshee, just to be real with you guys, is that on both AoEs, they're AoE attack based on an attack based champion, but they're really, really weak multipliers. So she's more of a control champion than a damage dealer. Her base attack is very low at 980. Just keep that in mind. She's also not the speediest. I'm going to give her an A minus. Uh, Hellfreak. Hellfreak, Hellfreak, Hellfreak. This is the champion they actually made after Hell Hades. They made Ash Walker for me and Hell ha and Hellfreak for Hell Hades. The same update. Super cool of you guys to fly us over. I've had enough of this nonsense. I pretend. I pretend. Decreased defense on the A1. Okay. Not a great land, right? Uh, we have stealing buffs on the A2. Single target. Meh. And then swap HP with an enemy. Extra turn. Uh... I love extra turn abilities, but I don't love Hellfreak. No offense to anybody, uh, <laughs> Hell Hades or any Hellfreak fans out there. I'm going to give him a, this is definitely a six star regret for me. I'm going to give him a D, not a fan. Hellborn Sprite. Now, Hellborn has a three-time hitter with a heal reduction, and then she has the increased duration of all ally buffs with the increased crit rate on all allies. Can definitely give her some utility in clan boss teams, and that's about it. She is bringing the the, uh, the weak version of Weaken on her A1 as well, so if you're lacking a Weaken and you want a buff extender for clan boss especially, you know, you can do a lot worse than Hellborn Sprite. That being said, I think she's probably a C-plus champion, maybe a B-. minus. Abyssal, I'm going to give him a B He's got the AoE with block buffs on the A1. Again, we talked about this uh, time and time and time again, right? The AoEs and the A1s for stun sets are amazing. He's got the heal on a three-turn cooldown. Then he's got increased uh, defense and increased attack on a four-turn cooldown. The weak versions. Uh, but hey, at least he's bringing something else to the table. So between the heals, the AoE, the block buffs, I'll be at a small land rate. I think you can do a lot worse than Abyssal. He's, uh, yeah, did I say B? I'm going to give him an A-. minus. I'm going to upgrade his score. Uh, Corporal and Cadaver is not a very good champion, except for the fact that he is is the DPS on the world record clan boss team inside the entire world. He is a combo champion on the Infinity Shield team with Underpraise Brogni, because Brogni can make this shield bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, and the damage that he inflicts equal to 30% of the value on the shield. So grow shield plus crushing mass equals million damage hits off of this A1 ability, uh, especially when you have amazing gear, right? So, uh, He's a very tough champion to judge because outside of that, he's probably an F before uh, Under Priest Brogni. With that, all of a sudden, he vaults up to it's hard not to give him like a B plus or an A minus, you know? So you guys can be the judge there. Marques is my favorite arena nuker uh, for rare champions. She got the AoE with weaken extra damage. Really shows up as an extra hit. She's defense based. You can put her on a go second team. I put on a an updated guide on her like last week or something if you guys want to check that out. But Crush the Week is definitely one of the biggest damage dealing abilities provided you can set her up with another weekend champion so you're guaranteeing that extra hit because her weekend is only a 50 percent land rate 55 with sniper gnarlhorn uh marquez we're gonna give her a uh give her a b plus b plus uh gnarlhorn man Oof. this dude is a real boss man he is a real boss i'm gonna give him an a 
Uh, I, I have given a lot of good scores in this video, but the truth is, is I guess I don't invest in a ton of crappy rares. You know, sometimes in legendaries, I'm like, ah, if they suck, I'll still max them out just to see how bad they really are. Maybe I can make a video out of it. But for rares, I don't really do that, you know? Narlhorn, though, uh, on his A2, check this out, man. Wardrum. He's got a provoke. He's placing that provoke, right? That, that's beautiful. It's not predicated on a critical hit or anything like that. And then he's got increased defense on himself to help him keep alive. That's a guaranteed provoke, basically on a three turn cooldown from a rare champion. What's more though, is he has unkillable on himself for two out of every three turns. Really easy to keep this dude alive, control the enemies, lock them down, and he's really not going anywhere. So I really love Narlhorn. Uh, all right, we have Guardian. Guardian, Guardian, Guardian in Guardian gear. So apropos, uh, on his A1, we have increasing the duration of all enemy buffs by two turns. Uh, Decreasing the duration. Increasing would really suck. That would make him an easy F. Increasing the duration of all enemy buffs by two turns, man. Guardian, dude, what, what, what's going on here? Four times at random. Each hit has a 35% chance of applying a block buffs. Meh. Okay for Fire Knight, that's about it. Uh, block debuffs and counterattack buff on this champion for two turns. Continuous heal on this champion for two turns. A very selfish ability. We're going to give Guardian a big, fat... D. Not a good champion. Berserker. Berserker has an attack one enemy. Grants an extra turn if the target is killed. Not a good ability. Decent multipliers on Berserker. Berserker's actually a fairly good DPS champion for a rare. And then he's got Sweep. Attacks all enemies two times. Will ignore 20% of each target's defense. So you put him, uh, you know, with the Sweep. You can put him in Stun if you want another AoE. You know, chance at a Stun there. Or you can just build him out in Savage, you know, in Helm Smasher. And really bump up that shot. Maybe a 70% ignore defense and start using him as a DPS option. With all that said, he's kind of one-dimensional. He's not anything too crazy. I'm going to give him a B minus, maybe a C plus. Uh, you know what? They're not they're not uh, a rares, but Shield Guard and Armager. A A. There we go, guys. We got through this video a lot faster than the last one when we did all the legendaries. If you have another two hours, hour and forty five minutes to kill, go ahead and check out that video in the description below. And let me know if you want me to do one with epics as well. Thank you for watching, guys. And as always, take care, guys.